What's up guys, it's Matt with the YouTube channel Bleepin' Jeep. So recently Pennzoil sponsored a trip for a few of us YouTubers to go check out the Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yes, the same museum that had a sinkhole open up and swallow a bunch of priceless Corvettes. So we got to walk around that place and see some of the old Corvettes, some new Corvettes, some prototype Corvettes, and then there was this thing. After that, we went over to the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Challenge Invitational, where we got to see some pretty cool stuff like the Speed Stop Challenge, some racing, and we got a walk around of Ken Thwaites' new Evo. And then, Ken Thwaites and Brian Johnson took us around in a few hot laps in their race cars, which was awesome. But the real reason for the trip was to learn about Pennzoil. I've always wanted to know how oil got from the ground to your car, so I wanted to teach you a little bit about that and then leave you with more highlights, including the race car ride-along at the end. So how does oil, and gas for that matter, get from the ground to your car? Well first, let's talk about conventional motor oil. So it all started at the end of the Permian period a long time ago in what was called the Permian-Triassic Extinction Event. So. 90% of all the marine life, plants and animals, died, they sank, and were eventually covered in mud. Now, fast forward 250 million years and all that mush has been sitting down there getting compressed into what we now call crude oil. So we've all seen those oil pumps, or what they call pump jacks, or oil derricks. A hole is drilled way down into the earth and those pumps suck out the raw crude oil. After that, they go through a few water separators and then into a big tank called a fractionating column to separate it further in what is known as fractional distillation, which is basically just a fancy term for boiling it. So as the crude oil boils and heats up, it separates into different layers just like water and oil separate. So at the bottom, you have the residue, which is called bitumen, and it's used for asphalt and tar. Next up you have fuel oil for ships and power stations, then different lubricating oils like your base oil which is conventional motor oil. After that is diesel oil for trucks, semis, and buses, then kerosene which is also aircraft fuel. Further up you get naphtha which is used in making chemicals and plastics, and next you have gasoline which of course you know where that gets used. And then the lighter gases at the top, such as natural gas, aka methane, followed by propane and butane. Alright, so back to the base oil that we extracted from boiling the crude oil. Basically, to make conventional motor oil, you just take that. Of course, it has to be filtered and tested for thickness and stuff like that. But after that, you just add the motor oil additives, such as anti-wear, anti-foam, detergents, rust inhibitors, and voila! You have conventional motor oil. So you may be asking what about synthetic motor oil? Well, I can't speak for the other companies, but let's talk about how Pennzoil makes their synthetic motor oil. They do it with natural gas, aka methane gas that was extracted from the crude oil we talked about earlier. Here's a cool fact. Natural gas can be cooled to negative 162 degrees Celsius and it turns into liquid or LNG, liquid natural gas, which is 600 times smaller and easier to transport. Anyway, back to synthetic motor oil from natural gas. It's done by the GTL process known as gas to liquid, or the fischer tropsch process. Just by that term alone, you should already know this is going to be more complex. Basically, everything is done at the molecular level for synthetic. So, step one is the gasification process where pure oxygen is added and reacted with methane to make syngas. It then gets filtered. Step two is to use a catalyst to convert that syngas to liquid hydrocarbons, which makes a waxy substance at room temperature. Step three is hydrocracking and distillation. At this point, the molecule chains are very long and are cut shorter to make diesel, kerosene, and a synthetic motor oil base depending on the length the molecule chains are cut. Then step four is to take that synthetic motor oil base and add the motor oil additives, and voila! Synthetic motor oil. 
Easy, right? So the benefits of synthetic over conventional is that synthetic stays more true to its weight in extreme temp swings and over the life of the oil change, which in turn results in improved performance, cleanliness, reduced consumption, and better fuel economy. Okay, there it is. I hope that was informational. I know I sure did learn a lot when researching all of this, but now let's get to the ride along.
guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Pennzoil for sponsoring this video, and thanks to Ken Thwaites and Brian Johnson for the ride-alongs. Make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. We do videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'll see you in the next one.